So Lionel, you're either going to have to leave or sit down or be blocked. So can you please, please sit down or leave, Lionel, or I'm going to have to block you, okay? Because I, I don't know how to banish you. Um. In the there is a way you know, to. I'm a you, you, yeah, you have to go to the uh, edit the event page and let me double check. Events, look at this, ban users was the option you had to choose. Yeah, you go to I, edit. I, go under, I go under him, but it doesn't allow me to. to um, I open staff. And uh, it shows me a participants list, but it when I bring up like Lionel, it, it just allows me to either turn off his audio or not. Um, if I select him, it does not allow me to to banish him. It allows me to block him. Hmm. I guess that's all I can do is just block him and see uh, if that gets rid of him out of here. So, so I guess uh, I, I block Lionel. I guess that means he's out of the uh, out of it for now because I don't want him being in the recording. So, mm, so I, actually. I block I've blocked him so far because I don't know how to banish any persons from being in the event, so I got to block them. Mm. Alrighty. Yeah, so Stormy, Stormy, are you ready? Stormy's going to be recording when Stormy shut the door. Um, there's one other person that's standing up over there. So, um, if you could please sit down um, so that uh, nobody's interfered with. Mm -hmm. uh, hold on. Yeah, Sarah. Uh, Sarah, can you please sit down? Uh, Sarah, can you sit down or leave? Uh, or... I mean, not that I want to, but I'll have to block you as well so that other people um, can go with me. It's okay. She's not talking, but she's not sitting down. I just don't want it to be a unpleasant. Mm -hmm. So we're mm -hmm. all we're all good to go um, when you're when you're ready to go, Stormy. We're ready to record and uh, ready for other people. So. Mm -hmm. Let me take a quick swim of water. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, uh, let me full, full screen then. Alrighty. So as I was saying before, this is essentially about the shop, uh, shop owner experience uh, when you're starting out on Booth. Uh, yeah. So just a little bit of info about me. Um, I've taken an e-commerce class back in college before I uh, started my boot shop. And well, not April, June 2021. And I already have, as y'all already know, I've been using Booth uh, before I started my shop. 
Oh wait, shoot, it accidentally skipped ahead. Gosh darn it. Um, there we go. Okay. So there's three main topics to my little presentation. Uh, the first is choosing what you want to offer in your shop, essentially your inventory. Second is pricing and designing your listings. And then last is your shop TOS and uh, essentially uh, releases, like items you release. Um, all right, Alrighty. so first thing is choosing your inventory. So three things I recommend when you're trying to decide what you want to put up on booth. Uh, first, look at what you already uh, know how to do or enjoy doing and see if maybe uh, if there is a niche for that on Booth or if there isn't. Like browse the marketplace for what's already out there, see if there's anything similar to what you already do and maybe even get some inspiration. You can also ask any friends, like friends around here, or even family uh, for ideas for things you want to put up on Booth in general. Um, that could be really helpful in the future or even now, whether you decide to open one up now or later on. And if you're already a creator that has a existing audience or fan base, you could, op you could do like a little survey uh, to sh uh, see what people might want to buy from you. Alrighty. So with that said, um, quick little question to ask yourself when deciding uh, what you want to make for your booth or what you want to put up. Uh, are you going to focus on chasing any specific trends or are you going to try to focus on making products that won't lose popularity over time? Because one thing I've noticed on Booth is sometimes people make products based around certain memes that at one point were popular or are currently popular, but eventually, you know, memes eventually lose their popularity, for example. Whereas sometimes it may be better to make something that won't lose as much popularity, but, you know, something just always available and always relevant. Hence the evergreen term. And shop specialization. You could offer a variety of different things to people that may want to buy from your shop. You could specialize in a specific area. But regardless, um, it's your choice. And of course, like anything else, don't lose the, don't sell yourself short. Because only you could have started your shop, no one else. Here's actually a few boot shop owner examples that I have uh, picked from people that I've, uh, that I follow. Um, first is Donin Spiele. I apologize if I butch that uh, name, but as far as I know, um, they are very known for doing a variety of VTuber backgrounds and other stream assets, including uh, VROID products. And then the other individual you, uh, you see on the screen is actually a friend of mine, uh, Luca. Um, Luca does a lot of VROID models and textures that are put up on Booth. And Luca actually also does commissions for that very same thing as well. Um, actually, before we get on to uh, topic two, does anyone have any questions about um, the first topic, which was uh, inventory? Okay, Stormy, go ahead. Also, I can't see the chat for anyone that might be typing. I apologize. I got to make sure that I open Stormy's mic here. Mm -hmm. Let me raise this. Yeah, Stormy's mic should be open. You should be open on your mic, Stormy. 
You might need to go into your audio settings to make sure the plus it hasn't switched what your mic is. If it's not uh, broadcasting properly. No, I, I see that he's turning off his mic to talk, but we're not hearing you. Hmm. Yeah, just so you know, Scormio, we're not hearing your microphone. Yeah. Messenger, if you Discord, we're going to be able to do that on, on our Discord or connections with everybody as well. So now Scormy's back, so maybe see if Scormy has the audio working. Mm. Ah, okay. You got it. And Ke uh, Kevin, welcome. Kevin, let me turn on your mic here for... Uh... Mm-hmm. Uh, don't have to me I don't the question. Know. I'm trying to understand the question. It sounds like they want to sell something, but they don't have anything to sell. Yeah, uh, uh, that, uh, yeah, that's why we're starting so these classes. Yeah, that's why we're starting these classes so that people can learn uh, and teach each other and share with each other how to how to make items that you can sell and can put into your store. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, Stormy on uh, has the booth up PM, but most he does all the stuff for free, which is great for a lot of people. Um, uh, uh, people can do free stuff, people can sell stuff, people can concentrate just on uh, avatars. People can concentrate on items, accessories. Uh, uh, people can concentrate, con concentrate on pictures or whatever they want to do. So um, if you don't have it, like if I, if I don't have avatars, I'll always be able to say, hey, talk to my friend Ayuku. She does a a custom avatars or talk to Stormy or talk to Shijoshi or you know whoever it is. 
um, you know, that wants to do it, I, I would just, you know, would just recommend, you know, people go to Barrio Hispano, go to our booth PM shop and see the links of the different people they work with and, you know, and what they concentrate on. Okay. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Palmy, can you please sit down? We have class that's going on, Palmy. All righty, um, let me get things, uh, let those questions answered. I think we can go about topic number two of my little presentation. Storm, are you still recording? Okay, good. Just double checking. Alrighty. So topic number two is pricing and designing your listings. I know we've, we bought a few things that are included in this one. Um, like I said before, uh, keep your currency rates and any fees in mind especially if you're uh, not from Japan, which I'm sure I know a lot of us are not from there. So that's why a lot of us have to use PayPal and PayPal has a lot of fees. So make sure you're not, you know, underselling yourself too much. Um, but of course, like I uh, mentioned, you can either do things, you can do things for free or you could put everything behind a paywall of like a certain amount of yen. It's completely up to you. Um, quality over quantity, though, does matter. Um, if you want to, if you really, especially if you are like selling things for yen and not for free, but well, even when it's for free, regardless, uh, how you, how your items are presented uh, in their listings on booth will affect uh, the perception of your shop and perception of what you make. And of course, um, like I mentioned earlier, you can uh, look at other boot shop owners uh, for inspiration, but always remember, you know, your own worth. And this is a little quote from my friend uh, Luca. Uh, Having a free version of an item seems to help with sales. And it really does, because um, like uh, before, like mentioned before, uh, it really is great when people offer like free items, because not everyone may have the funds to get a lot of things on booth with money. So it's not like at least free version to test uh, out something you want to get later on when you have, or to see if you really like it and all that. And then as far as designing your listing, of course, you want to give your listing structured and very much unique titles, because it's going to be a lot of, especially if you're doing uh, something that's, that's, well, if you're specializing in a specific area, you're probably going to come across very similarly named uh, listings or items. So it's important to at least make things as unique as you can. You can even use uh, emojis to help like differentiate your stuff. Um, of course, like I mentioned before, um, presentation is important. So graphic design uh, helps a lot. You can develop graphics to show off your products. And there's lots of things you can use for that. You can use Canva, which is actually what I use to make this presentation. Um, there's a number of different things you can use um, to design a nice little eye-catching, like, thumbnail showing off what you've put up on your booth, whether that's a model or a texture or just anything. And, of course, after that, uh, correct tag usage. One thing to always remember is not to be too misleading uh, when it comes to uh, selling things because last thing you probably want is angry customers being like hey you you um promoted this as being that but then i 
oh, I downloaded the file and it doesn't match what's showing, you know, but sometimes it's just because of lighting or whatever. But regardless, uh, it's always good to tag your listings properly and use only relevant tags and categories for your products. So that way it's easy for people to find them via the search engine on Booth. It's really easy to uh, curate your searches on that search engine, search engine, excuse me. So that's why it's very important. Also with correct tag usage, you, it helps sometimes to kind of test whether using a lot of tags or a small amount of number of tags help, uh, but not too many tags. I don't know if there's an exact limit to how many tags you can use on Booth. But, you know, sometimes less is more. And then finally, item descriptions for your listings. Uh, you can provide a summary of whatever your product is. Um, it's always good form to give credit to any, like, third-party uh, resources that you might have utilized to make that item. Whether that's, like, a base uh, that you use, because I know some creators make uh, bases that people can use to make models and just any other important information that people should know. Alrighty, um, before we get on to topic number three, does anyone else have any other questions that I might have missed because I can't see the chat? Yeah, I wanted to go back into the chat of some things that are mentioned. One thing was mentioned in regards to giving away the free items is that uh, you cat suggest that on the free items that you should watermark them. Um, yes. Putting the, la the link to your booth account. So uh, links to your booth account will always help in giving away free items and Kara mentioned that watermarks can be easily removed, and if your watermark is improperly placed, so if it's in the lower corner or not in an area where the watermark is covering over the majority of the picture, yeah, it can be edited or squeezed out of it, but if you watermark over as a layer on top of the whole picture, there's no editing tool that can get rid of that watermark. So, mm -hmm. yeah. so some watermarks are good, some watermarks are bad. Sometimes when you're working with a particular talent or artist and they don't want you to put watermarks on top of it, sometimes you can do that um, uh, just to give stuff away to make them always come back to you because that particular artist is only working with you anyway and making their product. So. Um, mm -hmm. I, by the way, I4, thank you very much for joining us here. So if anybody doesn't know I4, oh. uh, uh, we'll let I4 inter kind of introduce himself. I uh, need to turn on I4's mic here. Mm -hmm. so I'm uh, I have uh, uh, watermarked uh, stuff in the past with a dozen watermarks in the People that wanted to steal it still managed to get rid of all the watermarks, even once I engraved pretty good. Yeah, that. Yeah. That reminds it, it, me. I mean, if you watermark your items correctly and put like a gray image of your link over the whole picture, there's no editing tool that can get rid of that watermark. It all depends on how you moder a watermark it. Uh, you can water uh, actually watermark with stuff that can't be uh, people won't be able to get rid of. Mm -mm. Uh, the whole watermarking thing actually reminds me of something that I've noticed, or uh, especially with like thieves that decide are thieves that decide to steal things from people's shop. I've come across uh, a few people that do that and like have have uh, run whole boot shops just full of stolen assets. Or traced assets before, unfortunately. Yeah, it, it 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 does get very difficult in trying to trace your stuff and people using your stuff and your legality. And I know 
that sometimes watermarking, if you just put them down in the bottom corner or stuff like that, people are going to take them and resize it to cut out your watermark. But if you put a faint gray or, or white blurred image over the top of it, like with the text of your logo, there's no software that can actually get rid of the correct placement of a watermark. So if you ever have problems with that, let me know and I can help you and show you how to layer your watermarks into it where nobody can get, uh, nobody can get rid of it. Also, I'd like to mm -hmm. welcome uh, a friend of all of, uh, all of us in here to Boss that just joined us as well. So I'm gonna be turning on to Boss's microphone so uh, to Boss will be able to a ask any questions if he wants to. To Boss, you're welcome. Mm -hmm. All right. So with all of that said, I think we can uh, actually go on to the final topic, which is topic number three of my presentation, your shop TLs and releases. This is especially uh, going to be important in relation to watermarking and all that stuff. There's another thing that is good to have when you run a boot shop is a proper like terms of use or terms of service in place so that when you're dealing with anyone stealing or misusing your products either outside of booth or within booths like i said there are people who've made literal boot shops full of uh, stolen assets before um it's good to have something like what i screenshot from my own uh tos document there's specific like bullet points uh like you may not resell or redistribute without permission um, you may not claim ownership, you're allowed to like wear the product, or you can't use it for anything that goes against, uh, you know, and like, and like you said, um, Vern, that, uh, people tend to modify, uh, products, images, and such, to like crop out the water, crop out any watermarks, um, for example, I have a clause in my TOS that mentions you may modify products in any imaging edit image editing software as long as they've been purchased directly from my shop, for instance. And I actually came up with that because of situations like that where people will modify uh, products, whether to steal or to just um, use it, but especially like stealing. And there's a very easy way to prove that you did buy something from someone's shop because, you know, there's a whole, uh, what is it? Let me look at, uh, I believe there's a whole, like, history section that you can go back to, like, a library section that you can go back to to see what you've purchased with over amount of time. But that's just an example from my own TOS. For anyone who uh, wants to do what they can to do what they can to protect themselves online, uh, recently relaunched their boot shop and they had to be a little stricter about their TOS because in the past um, they were sadly they sadly had a lot of customers that used their products um, without giving credit for example or straight up um, like re reusing the product elsewhere or other i think possibly reselling it elsewhere but mainly like use uh, showing it off or using it without giving proper credit was the, i think the biggest reason they had to shut down their shop and then relaunch it but with a stricter tos because credit is important because it's always good to link back to where you got something from Especially if someone asks you, hey, where did you get that outfit? Where did you get this? You can be like, I got it from so and so. Alrighty, and with that said, um, we are on our, I believe this is the second to, I think it's like second to final slide, which is very brief, but basically it's about, you know, shop item releasing. Uh, knowing how often you can upload new items to distribute is important for your, your shop's success. But of course, remember to take necessary breaks to avoid burning out. Just like with anything else, creator, 
or anything related to business in general. You don't want to essentially overwork yourself and do too much and then not be able to continue going forward or continue making things for your shop or your business or whatever. So it's good to take breaks. And that's the end of my I do really hope that this is at all helpful to anyone who attended today's event, just like the past event that I uh, first presented this at. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And I think uh, a lot of us uh, have learned a lot about, you know, where to begin and where to start um, in uh, doing exactly, you know, doing it the right way. And, I mean, if you guys go on YouTube and you search Ayuka's name, um, you'll find out a lot of singing that Ayuka has done in the past. You'll find out a lot that she's done. Uh, uh, with the, the making of avatars and running her booth shop, um, and we're 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 blessed to have Ayuku and you know uh, Lady Estella Rose and other people that will be coming into this to to learn from and share so that we can all work in booth together. Um, does anybody have any questions? Either they would like to ask on their microphone or in text. No questions. So uh, Argami says, um, do you need more people to present? Um, you can present it uh, when you have a booth shop. Um, you can you present, present it to present anybody that you want to. No, no, I'm asking if you need more people to present here as in to explain how booth works. Um, hold on, I can't hear your microphone. Let me get over closer to you. I am sorry. I was asking if you need more people to present here to explain how booth works. Oh, absolutely. If you have any friends whatsoever that know uh, uh, how to operate booths or want to do booth presentations, uh, showing their shop what they do to advertise their booth. We we welcome everybody that knows anything about booth. Uh, that uh, we're I know something about booth. I could share something if you would like. Uh, would love it. We can't hear your audio, or at least I can't hear your audio too well. Is my audio that bad? I'm sorry. I could try switching my microphone. You Gucci to me. It's becoming increasingly obvious. I can't deny it no longer. Hello? I'm small. Is that I can any hear better? Yeah, that's yeah, not my microphone, that's better. but now you're going to pick up my uh, husband and my dog. That's okay. We're okay with them if they're okay with us. It's becoming increasingly obvious. I'm smaller. I can't deny it no longer. Um. I'm small. Yeah, uh, I was thinking that I have a booth shop <laughs> and I could explain if you need more oh, people to explain, but I wasn't sure if this was an open forum or not. Yeah, no, it's no, definitely an open forum. Uh, if everybody could listen to the, the, the letter talk, please. Boy, I mean, you know, down oh, here. Well, okay, hold on. Down here. <clears throat> I'm gonna, I'm gonna stand up here. Okay. Okay. Hello, awesome. everyone. Yeah. I'm uh, Argama. Uh, thank you, thank you. Uh, some of you know me, some of you don't. Uh, is anyone here, like, not already have a booth set up and is trying to set one up? Um, like, some of us are just setting here... it up now, and that's why we're here to kind oh, of learn. So anything you can share with us. Okay. Um, so, uh, Ayoko did a great job, like, kind of explaining, uh, are you, did the witches come all the way? I'm sorry, that was more like talking. Uh, so she did like a really great job um, of explaining like how running a business works in general. And 
and I think a lot of what she has talked about can kind of like carry over into uh, oh, other things. Sorry, my husband is playing D and D, so you might hear some language in the background. I just need you to understand. No, we're good. Okay, I'm going to share my screen, which I'm going to show off my booth is basically what I'm going to do, and we'll see how it goes. That's awesome. Uh, would Stormy be able to record? Oh, uh, yeah, absolutely. I don't mind. Stormy, uh, record okay. if you uh, record if you can, Stormy. That would be awesome. If you would like. I'm going to stand here because I like being important, and I'm really just being sarcastic. I, uh, yep. <clears throat> So, uh, yeah, this is Booth for people who don't know. Um, what you'll need is basically a Pixiv account to sign up, and you can sign up with just something simple like your email or whatever. However, before you start a, uh, a shop, you're going to have to be an adult, you know, 18 or older. You're going to need to have, like, your PayPal account. Um, and honestly, I would recommend only digital goods on Booth. Because anything you have to ship, they're going to want a Japanese address. Um, here's an example of my my shop. It's not great as far as graphics go. Like um, Ayo, uh, Ayoki was explaining before about having kind of like a nice setup. Mine is mediocre. I have a variety of both things that cost money or are free. And a lot of them uh, will say free in there. But I'll offer something that's called a uh, booth, which people can pay like a dollar, or in this case, like 80 cents. I don't remember how much the yen is right now. Um, and I uh, agree that having like a free item is great to have. I do have certain things here that have free and paid versions. Usually when it comes to full-on models, I will do the maybe the VRM for free, but if you want the Vroid file, you'll have to pay for the Vroid file. Uh, and this just kind of gives you, like, I don't know. For me, I'm one of those people, oh, that didn't switch over. I'm so sorry. I'm showing my screen, and I didn't realize that it doesn't switch. So let me switch uh, right. Oh, I didn't I didn't do that, please. We're going to keep streaming. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Hi, Dan. I, I'm doing this on the fly. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. Um, so we're going to pop over to, like, my shop real quick to kind of give you an idea. Why, why? Why are you like this? In the same window, please. Okay, is it, it all on? So the problem is, is that it's... It, it, it automatically opens in the new tab. Okay. Yeah. Okay, here we go. So, as I was explaining before, it's not yeah, like uh, super Yeah, Shima, can stunning. you come over here and sit down, please? Uh, yeah, we need Shima to sit down. Hi, Shima. Do you mind taking a seat while I present this? I appreciate it. Thank you so much. You can just sit right here in front. You can be my special little buddy. Thank you. Okay. Um... Yeah, so basically, uh, my shop has a bunch of things that are both free and cost money, as I mentioned before. Like, something like this, you'll see it says both free here, but then you see a dollar here, and you might be like, oh, well, why is a dollar? I use a dollar. It's not actually a dollar. It's like it's 75 cents. But uh, because you can do a booth with support, so people can donate if they would like to. It's uh, something uh, I would recommend if you're offering free items. So that way, if they want to support you, they can. And if not... They don't have to, but I do have plenty of things on here on my site, per se, that are free because I like to make sure that there's uh, assets out there for people who, you know, don't really kind of know what they're doing. Um, when you start up a shop, like, you'll have options over here. I'm going to show you my shop, and we're going to look at some stuff, and I hope there's no personal information that's going to be shared, and if it is, oops. Um, <clears throat> So you have like two basic settings up top. You just general settings, and I mean, I don't, I don't see anything here that I'm worried about at the moment as far as, yeah, that I haven't already shared publicly. 
Um, and this is where you'll uh, start your shop. You'll put your shop name, you'll make your description, your URL, and then you can, you know, your links and stuff. Uh, they'll say something about shipping. Again, I don't really recommend shipping personally unless you're from Japan. Now, you'll notice that there is Japanese. Like, there's an English button up in the top corner here. You can switch your language, but if not, most browsers will have a sort of, like, translate to English, and then you can get the general idea of what's going on. There's only a few sections that I've really noticed uh, suck in that respect. Uh, there's a payout section where you can kind of, like, get your payout. Yeah, that's my email address. If you want to PayPal me now, you're welcome to. If not, don't worry about it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, and, yeah, you just basically fill out all these different, like, little informations. Again, I don't, I don't say anything about shipping because a lot of it is Japanese. Um, I'm going to just, like, PayPal you for right now. I'm going to jump quickly back to my dashboard, and then you have a sh edit shop design. Uh, and this is where, as we saw before, what my shop looked like. I had the banner. You can just upload, you know, your own banner. It kind of gives you the size that you need here. Again, if you don't read it, you, you can just translate to English, which most can do. You can pick your colors and how you want, like, your images and stuff to be presented. How you want your shop to be designed, personally. And it, that's all this really is just kind of like a personal thing. As I, Yogi was saying, is having like some information in graphic design or some like knowledge and that can help make a cohesive shop. I have some knowledge, but I am also a type of person who doesn't really care about cohesion because I just wanted to get my stuff out there as quickly as possible to kind of like help people because I was doing tutorials online and I was mentioning things that people could use and so that just kind of made things easier. Um, when you want to submit an item, uh, you'll do, uh, you have this drop down menu right here. Look, I know this isn't as coherent. I do things on the fly. But you'll just add an item and you'll have like, it's super easy and super kind of informative. Uh, this part might be a little confusing. Uh, you'll see this house, which is a ship, a physical item, and then you'll see this little cloud, which is a download, and you're going to want that download again. You can right-click and translate to English, but you'll want a digital item to sell. Now, here, you can sell pretty much anything you want. It could be technically a physical good. It could be models. It could be comic books. It could be video games. Some people, I think, sell voice clips as well. I've seen that. It was very interesting. Um, but yeah, all this seems to be pretty self-explanatory. You put your display images here. You pick your category. There's plenty of categories to choose from. And then like uh, some of them will even give you subcategories, which this is not letting me because, yeah, you know. Um, your description, you'll fill out your information. There's a way to embed your VRMs using the embedded widget. Uh, widget. Widget. I am so sorry. Uh, <laughs> and then your tags, which would go in this little line here. This says tags, but you can also, again, translate. Uh, you'll set your prices here. If you have multiple items, you can drop them here, and then a bunch of things will show up. I... If I click this, well, okay, you're not going to see my desktop, thank God, because I got stuff on there that people don't need to see. Can I add things to booths? May or may not be allowed to sell. Uh, so, so maybe may not, not safe for work, like, but hitting. So you can have not safe for work stuff. Um, I'll get to that in a quick second. Uh, up here, it lets you pick if it's going to be an adult item or not safe for work or an all age item. Uh, so mark it accordingly depending on what type of item you're selling, if that answers your question. Um, over here, I grabbed a couple of items to kind of give you an idea of... <laughs> yes, there is, there is definitely not safe for work. Uh, to give you kind of like an idea of how you can like select one or multiple things to kind of upload. I'm not uploading these. These are just... I don't know what these images are. Um, but on the options, you can add variants. And it'll say it's digital. And then you can come and you can edit it and be like, okay, I only want this one. 
to be three, and then you can add a second variant and be like, all right, well, this one is going to be 500 yen. And so you can keep doing that with everything that you've uploaded and just make sure you select the proper one you want. Uh, this right here is sell outside of Japan. Now, if you do want to sell a physical item, I would recommend to, like, accept. But So this is if you don't want people outside of Japan to buy your stuff. Mostly if they're selling shipped goods, they might not want to ship it to the United States. So you would say receive. But for the most part, if it's digital, just accept it. And then, you know, we'll all be happy family. This is stuff that uh, I didn't fill out, but you just click publish and then your item would be now on the shelf. Pretty simple. Thanks. And then once you're there, you'll have um, a manage items and you can see all the items you have, uh, how much you co how much they cost, how many sales you've made, and so on and so forth. And beyond that, the only other thing I think it would be is GMC sales. Um, oh, let me see that part. Is basically where it talk, breaks down how many sales you've made, and it doesn't say exactly like who bought it, but it does give you like an order ID. It tells you like what the sale price was and how much of the cut that booth got, and then once it gets shipped to you on PayPal, um, I'm honestly I don't think PayPal's taken a a cut from it. I think that goes through booth. They might have. I don't know. Don't quote me on that one. That one I don't remember. Um, but do keep in mind that you are looking at Japanese yen and there is a conversion rate and that has hurt me a little bit. Um, I think I think it's like more than that. I think it's like 2.8 or 9 and then like if you convert it from the yen to the US dollar through PayPal, there's also another fee on top of it or pulling the money from it. So PayPal kind of takes a lot of money from this. However, if you go to websites such as like Amazon.jp, you can just use the yen directly there. Or if you buy from some booth, you can use you know it directly from there from your PayPal, and that's like a whole other type of thing. Um, but yeah, that's basically the gist of how um, setting up like a booth itself works. Um, not so much like the finer details, but yeah, and just kind of pick what you uh you want to sell that's uh that's that's it that's that's my my first thing uh, uh yep if you have any questions i'll uh take them now thank you thank you thank you um i have some questions i mean uh some of the people that are in here like a kumi um, you know, they're making products like a t-shirt that might have artwork on it or uh, some kind of a saying and stuff like that. When they mm -hmm. work with Booth uh, at Pixiv, who owns it, is, are they able to sell that um, as an actual true garment in real time in Japan? So... The thing is, is that they have to have the physical item themselves. Uh, they would have to be willing to ship it to Japan from wherever they are. And it would be not through booth themselves, because it doesn't work like Redbubble, where you just put your image out there and then it prints on demand. You have to have the physical item, you have to ship it out, and you would do it directly to the consumer. Booth doesn't know about that stuff. Like, they don't, they don't really care about that. Um, and if you take artwork that is copyrighted or, um, as mentioned before with Yoku saying about someone stealing your stuff, Booth also doesn't technically care about that too much. They don't want that to happen, ideally, but they don't have anything, any measures to really stop that from, from occurring. Got it. Okay, yeah, I understood that Pixiv has something called Pixiv Live. Um, where mm -hmm. they're al able to print on stuff. I, I don't know all what those products are, but um, so I, get, I, I just need to learn about that as well. So There is a good chance if it is um, like a Pixiv Live is usually 
probably through Japan, which means you would have to be a Japanese citizen. I don't know per se. I know that there's other sites that do it that way where you have to have a Japanese bank account in order to do that and a Japanese mailing address in order to have a direct service like that. Um, that being said, that's not per se Pixiv. I don't know how Pixiv uh, works. On yeah, the um, uh, Skio, uh, Skioshi said, Skioshi? Uh, nailed it per, per, uh, uh, exactly. I'm talking about Pixiv Factory. Okay, um, yep, that still would be the kind of the same thing, where it is a Japanese company, and they're probably going to want you to have a Japanese mailing address and a Japanese bank account that tends to be the norm for Japanese companies when it comes to selling things. It's also the norm of um, like working on like Skeb. Like you can't actually become an American artist on Skeb unless you have all the Japanese account information, which is why we have, um, oh my gosh, what is it called? Uh, DGEM. Yeah. I was about Perfect to say, interest. yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I I've had a brain fart. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, I, uh, I know that a lot of people that actually do um, do the um, booth also have Redbubble accounts, and and uh, some people in our, our account um, uh, actually use Redbubble or different places like that. Another one here in the U.S. is Basil. So if you're going to have a booth yeah. account, you can tie in your booth account to a red bubble or uh, in printing up the artwork or printing up your mugs and different products. Uh, so we'll, uh, in, in future yep. classes in here, we'll talk about red bubble and we'll talk about Zazzle or, or other service fulfillment places. So you could do and that, how to tie those you're in with adding your booth in account. You're adding in two middlemen by doing that, and it's going to end up costing you a lot more money, and it's going to cost your customers a lot more money, and they're not they're probably not going to want to pay it. Like, for example, if you have a shirt on Redbubble, you can sell it for, like, $25, and you'll get, like, $5. But now that you have that, that has to ship to you, so now you have to count the shipping fee to you. You have to ship it out to somebody else, and you're going to have to charge them so you actually make money on it. So now at the 25, you're going to have to, like, expand it maybe to, like, 30 or more. And it might get to a point where it's just not worth it for them, especially if you're shipping overseas, because at least in the U.S., shipping costs are a lot. Uh, as someone who has uh, shipped overseas many, many times for other uh, reasons. So honestly, I would either have a, a Redbubble account and just sell directly through Redbubble without using Booth as the middleman. Or I would just open up a different type of uh, e-commerce site altogether. Yeah, no, perfect. So the, all those are uh, great reasons why we're all here to learn from people like you have, who have been there and done that and, and finding the best ways to do it. So that's a, a absolutely great news. I have um, been selling on uh, mm -hmm. Booth since... 2020 and I have been selling online on Etsy or I had started selling online on Etsy oh like 10-15 years ago and I used to do um, anime conventions so I know kind of about getting merchandise and selling and dealing with middlemen and selling on e-commerce sites and the benefits of going through a place like Booth which is just more of a search engine for your stuff versus going through something like a Redbubble which will do it for you, but it's also a low quality and it's full of scammers. And most people expect that there's going to be like stolen artwork, stolen stuff there. So. Wow. Um, also, I, I don't know if uh, Skyoshi uh, talked to you about what we're doing over at Barrio Hispano. Uh, but I do believe that we have one or two uh, booth shops in our booth shopping center available. If you would like one over there, please get in touch with me so I can let Vanilla Chan know to put you in. Um, oh, also, thank you. We have I, I'm, open I'm good, though, but thank you. Huh? Uh, 
<laughs> I'm good, thank you. <laughs> okay. Just uh, if you want um, to I'm, be I don't, I don't update my, I've been uh, redirecting my focus, so I'm not focused so much on booth as much anymore or making models. I've kind of redirected my focus into making video games, so that's sort of kind of what I'm doing, although I do appreciate the artwork. Yeah, um, I'm curious awesome. about your focus upon games. Uh, do you actually make the games now? That's my dream. Uh, yeah, um, it's a, I'm working on a visual novel. On a what? Which you all can wish list on uh, Steam, by the way. Uh, <laughs> totally not uh, plugging. <laughs> what do you want? I've been about 10 copies now. <laughs> I'm sorry, what, what, what do you do on Steam? I said I have my uh, my game up on Steam for wish list. Oh no, I'd I'd love to see what your game and what you're doing on in the gaming oh, industry stop and. Being a yeah, I'm it's doing a lot of move. stuff in the gaming industry as well. Move. Um, and it's I can small. sit down and explain everybody it to everybody what I'm doing in the gaming industry. Um. So you know, the gaming is, is big and fun, and you know it, it's also mm -hmm. about avatars. And I'm doing a lot in the gaming uh, metaverse industry now. So uh, always looking to to learn. So yeah, uh, you so use I'm also uh, makes video games. Who? And you you makes video games. Skyoshi does Skyoshi wonderful Mobile avatars. Yeah. And Melly's yeah, very I'm, work, I'm games, working with big video them. game companies mm -hmm. right now. Okay. I'm working with a company called Buildy Rocket Boy um, oh, that okay. is going to have a um, product coming out uh, that, where you're going to be able to make games Dream using an editing it. tool called Arcadia. You're going to be able to use uh, edit in something called Everywhere.Game. Um, so that's coming out into the uh, market. It's okay. not open yet. And... The oh, face Russian. that's on this character of my know. avatar you right, see right now is a gentleman by the name of Leslie Benzies. Um, he was I the ex-president of uh, Rockstar North, which uh, did um, Grand Theft Auto. Um, oh, so shit. He's 26 GTA? years in the gaming industry, so I work with some of the top gaming people in the world. Oh, that's that's pretty cool. I uh, I don't know too many people in the gaming industry myself personally. Um, so, yep, that's me. Yeah. Oh, good. No, I I love to learn what you're doing gaming. Yes. I know a lot of people in the UK that do Steam. That's I have I Steam. Um, it, it, you know it's a. Uh, Steam is obviously a, a big part of the market. Some people are actually even saying right now that Microsoft is thinking about buying Steam, which I think is just a rumor. I don't think it's going to go anywhere. Um, for those people that are in gaming or building avatars, uh, there's going to be some major changes that are coming into the building of avatars in the gaming industry that are going to be announced at GameCon, which is uh, next month, and even more so in August. So, uh, some some big names and places that are going into uh, into the gaming part of the, of the market now with avatars. So, Holy shit. Uh, you know, uh, gaming is much more than uh, doing what we're doing here for Booth in a cluster. Uh, or any of the metaverse platforms because gaming is much bigger but uh, it's it's all all of it is going right now through some big big changes um, so you know my thing about booth for those people who uh, are looking to get into booth is I'm just wondering how AI is going to pay off I mean how many people will buy AI uh, artwork in your booth shop um, you know, how many people will be able to prompt AI to do AI stuff or sell the stuff they can sell in Booth? Um, I just want to build a community of friends that all get along working in Barrio Espano or working in our streamers world um, of all being friends and learning and sharing from each other. So how we can all help each other. 
uh, both in a social way and in our businesses. So, But you guys make some incredible avatars. I mean, I have great friends and friends I'm meeting every day in here, and I'm I'm blown away by what I see and everybody helping each other. And I I just like everybody just helping each other and being a part. I I think what we're doing here in, at Cluster over in Barrio Espano by having a PM boot yeah. shop and promoting each other. I also have a fan club shop inside of here and many of us have been there and i for you know does a lot of music events and uh i usually <laughs> works with i4 and i4 is able to produce his own stuff and he can put in free stuff or uh, for sale stuff over in the fan club uh, thing and I, i'll give you guys can uh you know uh control of uploading whatever you want to put over there to advertise your uh, music events. Um, um, there's other people that are in here, like uh, Tommy Tucker from the UK. Um, you know, we're going to have Tommy Tucker's going to be able to have his stuff there. Klaus from the Netherlands will have his stuff there. Uh, people will be able to come into our, our disco nightclub that we have over at Barrio Espano. And we'll have guest DJs that will be in there. Um, artists will be coming into our art gallery over in Barrio Espano uh, where we can work with the artists. And, uh, you know, artists don't want to make their own stuff. Maybe they can get their art and work with a PM or shop or owner to make their product for them. So <laughs> it's just like uh, I, uh, I think everybody is open to, you know, just uh, staying on positive, not getting into the drama part of it and all just helping each other. I mean, Ayuku's helped me. Ayuku made uh, one of my avatars for me that is gonna be a uh, presenter that I use. Yeah, I was gonna leave now, okay. So. Brendan, breathe, like, damn it. Breathe. Say what, Chewbacca? Breathe, we've been talking for a whole hour, breathe. Nah, talking for two hours ain't that bad. Well, if you're a VTuber or a singer. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's coming. That's rich coming from you. <laughs> it's fun, though, and... singing 30 songs in two hours. But it was very tiring, and I'm never doing that on Cluster ever again. <laughs> Don't expect me to do that again. That was a tiring event. I expected too much from myself. But I pulled it stop off. Push, though, stop but. pushing so, yourself. Uh, I4, you get into doing yeah. stuff on Booth. Uh, tell us what you think about Booth and positive things and things we mm. want to know. What I want to know, not much. As of what I'm doing on Booth, I'm not really selling products since I, I'm, a, I'm a music producer. It's like I, I don't really make physical content, like v or whatever, but it's more for like, you know, it's like I guess like VTuber, like well, you can say quote-unquote merch, uh, I guess. Like my old VTuber hoodie design, I did put it up there on Booth for people to just buy if they want to. Because I am getting rebranded, like no, not rebrand, redesigned soon. So I thought it would be I'll like be something a, be nice the first as one a to buy your hoodie. old memory for people to have. Yeah. Yeah, you just I'll sold one. Two, two bosses just. You always have to be talking. It's hard on YouTube. Yeah, that's why I don't stream on YouTube. I stream my VTuber stuff on Twitch, but Twitch. my Dance YouTube Twitch. is for Dance my Twitch. original songs. And just like everything it's else. Something I'll tell you. It's something. It it definitely yeah. is. But I'll say that I reach. Which is something. I actually got to it. reach out to like a lot of very funny people, like wh whether it's also streamers or just like viewers, because some of them are genuinely entertaining, and in in return they keep me entertained in my chat. I'm like, what the fuck, like. <laughs> Oh, now, I, I personally I don't have an issue streaming on Twitch, but YouTube is solely dedicated to just like my original songs and like I guess some MMG shorts when I'm bored. 
and be short for and you it's and easier to manage to too. <laughs> no because back then I did attempt to put everything in one I, I didn't like how I managed it like it was very messy so I felt like I just wanted to put my streams on in like a totally different place so I'm like yeah let's just do that and it's yeah, also easier for me to just overlook things because like my playlist of original songs my collab collaboration projects and then there's like song covers like i think i i just like the interface better without all my like other stuff so F makes me feel like it's another tiktok oh, i've never used tiktok more, more, more like because i can't use tiktok when i'm still in hong kong <laughs> <laughs> we don't have tiktok guys sense. They got yeah. some fine men, Hong Kong TikTok. I'm just, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. I'm oh, they don't, they don't have, they don't, we don't have, we're not even, a, it's like, TikTok pulled out from Hong Kong after we returned it to, like, after we're, like, I don't know, ownership returned to China, China whatever, China. we have our own version of TikTok. Mm, but Singapore, now that I'm back here, yes, I can use TikTok, so. Not that I bothered to download it, no. They got some fine, they got some fine. Over there, over Don't some people do VODs? <laughs> I've come across a few. So. Yes, I do have uh, one of my long, like the long Genshin stream as a VOD on YouTube, but it's in a playlist. The only th reason why I don't like streaming Hi. on YouTube is it's harder to reach. Hello. Nope. All right, take care. Hi. It's Hi. harder to reach, Thank but you also are. like okay. Azama, I like you the very, very, very much, very, very informative. I like the, what was it called? My English sure, uh, stop being a bitch. interactability. Yeah, I like I like how on Twitch there's a lot of interface you can add in I'm to joking, interact I'm with joking. people, and I love that. That's why I opt Air Force. to stream on Twitch. Air Force. Air Force. Air Force. Bro, Vines died. Force. Sadly. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. 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 <laughs> remember, remember that that two D model you had, and you and those YouTuber company you had a whole dress on. You gotta be more specific, cause like if you're talking about wild shit that happened, there's a lot more wilder stuff than being in a maid dress. No, you like have you had like this avatar to have like long hair in the dress. It was like a two D oh, model, no. and you were you were like in like this VTuber company. I remember. Oh, well, that was like that was literally pre pre re debut. That was, bro, my branding. That's like old branding shit. <laughs> Because I, I deleted, I, I decided to start from scratch again, because I want to start something new. That, that was long ago, no shit. Oh, used, the fact that you used to remember that, I'm impressed, because I personally would have forgotten about it. Not because I don't want to remember it, it's just, it's old branding stuff, so there's no point for me to remember it anyways. I got, I got good memory, I remember a lot of things, somehow. Okay, that's, stuff from my childhood. that's good. I just remember the one time I got stuck mm. by a wasp. When I was younger. <laughs> that is this one was on vacation. Interesting. I I love how being stung by a wasp is like one of your like most deepest memory. That's No, that's terrifying. the first time I got stung by one. Oh, uh, I've I've never been stung by a wasp or a bee before. Well, I've never been bitten by anything before. I mean, excluding mosquitoes and all that, because that's a mo that's about to happen, but. I've I never think been Ayuku, like Ayuku sells attacked bees animals. on her um on her boot. So Ayoko, you can con you can contact um, with no. us. I Ayoku sells bees. Hmm? You you sell bees on I, your huh? No, I don't us sell us bees. <laughs> what the fuck? Wait, oh, if, contact if, with who? In case you want to be stung, I we, we can arrange that. What the fuck? I'm gonna sell um, party on my booth. That is sure. just straight off human trafficking. Please do not. <laughs> <laughs> what? 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 That. that. I'm, hey, it's time not. to chill out, you sicko. I, I became friends with a, with a psychopath. Why? I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm, I'm joking. Don't take that serious. I'm just joking. Ah, uh, <laughs> that's. What's the, what's the term for that genre? Steampunk. Yes, yeah, steampunk. You, you look steam steampunk. Steam, steampunk. Oh my god, Tsubasa. Steam Tomboy is my favorite. That's from aesthetic. Final Fantasy. Okay, no wonder. That's, Makes that's sense. That's not a lot from Final Fantasy. Final Fantasy. Do you know? Do like you know what steampunk? Steam. Is, that's the name of the genre, right? 
Unless like yes. my liter my never know. my I literature has like fucked me over. I look, Ayoku, I what the fuck? I'm sorry, I just had to like. <laughs> I, I just had to mess with her. He, he's just time. doing that so Ayoku will giggle. Yeah, I'm just doing that just to be a bitch. Yes, I, I yes, know. You, yeah. We know why you do it. Go ahead. Yeah. She's got a great laugh. 